Today, we're talking about Penrose diagrams and what really goes on inside of a black hole. A Penrose diagram is a physicist's subway map to space and time. A subway map just shows how stops are connected and can distort the distances as much as it wants. You can stretch and squeeze and move the stops around, but so long as the way that they're connected stays the same, it's still a good map. For a physicist, there's one difference. There is now another direction, time. So, instead of asking whether you can get to Albuquerque from here, the question is whether you can get from here at 12 o'clock to Albuquerque at 12.01, ignoring such petty matters as practicality. For a Penrose diagram, the only speed limit is the speed of light, the fundamental maximum speed of cause and effect. In the extreme situations where the curvature of space-time is relevant, such as near a black hole, everything is moving at near the speed of light anyways, so that's the speed that matters. More importantly, this is the speed that the mathematics of gravity, general relativity, cares about. If you want to know facts about gravity, rather than facts about rocket engines or how much acceleration people can take, this is the speed that matters. For the normal flat space you and I live in, the map is pretty simple. Position goes this way, time goes that way, and if you set your units right, light travels at 45 degree angles. An event happening here can affect an event happening here, but one here can't affect one there. Something traveling slower than light must follow a path that looks something like this. Space has three spatial dimensions, but we've only drawn one here. This diagram is actually the diagram for motion forwards and backwards along a line. This means that each point in this diagram is actually standing in for an entire plane. It turns out that it's actually a bit more useful to slice space in a slightly different way, with motion in and out of a center, with each point standing for a sphere. In this slicing, the diagram stops at the center, but everything else is the same. Time still flows this way, light still moves at 45 degree angles, and everything else said still applies. We however, have a slight problem. Our map is infinitely large. This might be a bit hard to fit into your glove compartment. The rule of Penrose diagrams is that, like a subway map, you can stretch and squeeze the diagram as much as you like, provided that you keep light moving at a 45 degree angle. You can compress the diagram like so, and now everything fits on a single page. This is the Penrose diagram for flat space. And this is a real diagram that you will see in scientific papers. But, so far, this is kind of silly. After all, the original plane worked perfectly well and didn't even distort any distances at all. The real use comes when space is curved. Just like you cannot make a map of the curved surface of the Earth without introducing some distortions of distances, you cannot make a map of the curved space times of gravity without introducing some distortions as well. To see a more useful application, I will now show you a black hole. <coughs> it's not very dramatic, is it? The bottom side of the diagram, since time flows upwards, represents the beginning, with some star just sitting there. The star then collapses, eventually forming a singularity, which is this jagged line here. This diagonal line is the event horizon, that famous line beyond which nothing, not even light, can escape. Anything past this line cannot escape the singularity any more than you can escape tomorrow. Now, it's not too hard to see what happens when something falls into a black hole. Things falling in start off in the past, outside of the black hole, over here. Then it passes the event horizon, which is, in itself, no more substantial than the border to New Jersey, before being crushed by the singularity. Note that you cannot see the singularity once you are inside. It's in your future. What someone on the outside sees is interesting. When you look at a star in a telescope, you are seeing the star as it was a long time ago. So relative to the events at a star, you are far away and in the far future on this line here, and your time flows like this. When you see something falling into a black hole, what you see is reflected light. This light travels at 
well, it travels at the speed of light. And the path it takes is along these lines here. So you can see that light emitted closer and closer to the event horizon takes a longer and longer to escape until that last photon emitted at exactly the event horizon takes forever to exit. What this means is that you never actually see anything cross the event horizon. Instead, the image of a falling object you see gets redshifted more and more and slows down more and more, approaching the exact moment it crosses the event horizon, fading to black exponentially. Neat, ain't it? So now you know what a Penrose diagram is, what happens when you fall into a black hole, and what people on the outside see. Well, that's all I have for today. Good night.